This week, we're back in Elkhart, Indiana for an overall look at the 2013 RV Industry Open House. And Jeff Johnston checks out the new Ford F-150 and Jayco J-Flight trailer. Plus, Rita whips up a couple of delightful fall snacks. These stories and more on this week's Rolling On TV. Closed and Spanish captioning, where available, is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. RV Open House, what is it? Well, technically it's not a show, even though it may feel like one. Although, being held outside, it really feels more like a big state fair, with tons of things to see and do, along with some fun food and activities. But, make no mistake, this event is all business. What started out a few years ago with one RV manufacturer holding an open house to show their new product lines to dealers has turned out to be the industry's largest event. Remember, I said industries. Unfortunately, it's not open to the public. It's just for dealers. Last week, we showed you some new products from Thor Motor Coach. And in the upcoming weeks, we'll bring you some more product features from various manufacturers. But today, we'll try and give you a general idea of the event and what you can expect to see in 2014. The open house begins in the open fields and parking lot of the RV MH Hall of Fame Museum and runs virtually the entire length of County Road 6. What are generally empty fields and pastures turn into impromptu outdoor displays and showrooms. Coming up, we'll check out some displays and see if we can spot some new trends for the upcoming year. But first, a word from our sponsors. starts with pride and ends up being the gold standard in pop-up truck campers. Four-wheel campers. Need we say more? See for yourself by visiting fourwheelcampers.com. Is your pop-up camper canvas getting a little worse for wear? Don't fret, just call the friendly folks at Canvas Replacements and their experienced staff will cut and sew you up a new one in no time. Canvas Replacements, your number one source for all your pop-up camper canvas needs. For more information, visit the company website at canvasreplacements.com or call them at 800-232-2079. Welcome back. Like I said earlier, this event is big, and being outside, the company displays are also big. As we looked around, one thing was becoming obvious. Whether you're talking about small pop-up and camping trailers, or the largest fifth wheels in motorhomes, the theme is bigger. More space, that is, and lighter. Everyone is cutting weight. And one company that has been leading the way is Living Light. Virtually everything on their trailers is aluminum, from the frame to the sidewalls right to the floors and cabinets. You may not have all the plushness and luxury look of wood and fabric, but if you're looking for practicality and convenience, you should definitely check out the line from Living Light. On the opposite end of the spectrum, even though we're still talking weight conscious units, most new RVs are looking more and more like homes, with all the amenities one would expect at home, but only on wheels. For example, many of the new units we looked at now have full entertainment areas, including fireplaces. 
And when it comes to comfort, the new trend is home-style furniture and furnishings. Leather recliners are in, as are office work areas. Let's face it, many of us do work some when we're on vacation. Let's not forget the kitchens. Gone are the little sinks big enough to wash a salad dish. Now, RV kitchens rival many home kitchens with tons of counter space from L-shaped counters to standalone islands. And if you didn't notice, they're also beautiful. Why, even bathrooms have gotten more room with big sinks and roomy countertops. Tubs and showers have also gotten bigger, which is a very nice thing. So, the next time you step into a new RV, be prepared for a pleasant surprise. Now, when it comes to RVs, the term roughing it has definitely changed. If you think all the changes for 2014 are limited to the inside, think again. RV manufacturers have been putting some serious consideration into time spent outside the RV, and the effort speaks for itself. The one thing we couldn't help but noticing on many of the units was the use of LED lighting. I'd venture to say that a good one-third of the RVs we saw had LED lighting strips built into the awnings. This really adds a nice-looking, practical touch. Also, outdoor kitchens are in. But let's face it, you're out camping to enjoy the outdoors. So, who wants to be cooking indoors? Of course, it's nice to know that if it does rain, you can always go back in and cook in your luxury kitchen. And another hot trend, outdoor TVs. Some RVs come with the TVs built right in, and now many have these new removable brackets that allow you to take the TV from inside and just hang it on the outside. So, as you can see, RV designers have been busy these past couple of years finding ways to make your next RV lighter, roomier, and definitely a lot more comfortable. Another thing we noticed at this year's open house was that RV accessory and component manufacturers were also participating. Lipper Components, a large manufacturer and supplier to the RV industry and aftermarket business, also opened their doors with a large display of all their latest products, which as you can see, is quite extensive. I must say that what started out as an impromptu event has turned out to be a very successful extravaganza that will only continue growing each year. As I mentioned earlier in the show, we'll be bringing you features of many of these 2014 models in upcoming episodes, so be sure and watch for them. Coming up, Jeff takes us along as he checks out the new Ford F-150 and Jayco J-Flight trailer. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Brian Tillett, president of Peterson Industries, and you're watching Rolling On TV. Exciting great things do come in small packages, like exceptional quality, extreme comfort, and luxurious appointments. You'll find all this and more wrapped up in one beautiful package, the Pleasureway Pursuit. See for yourself by visiting pleasureway.com. Weight distribution comes out of the Stone Age. Steel on steel friction is 50 years old. The Sway Pro makes other weight distributing hitches seem, well, prehistoric. The Sway Pro features a softer ride, built-in optimized sway prevention, quiet backing and turning, and little maintenance. Finally, intelligent engineering gives you a much better way to prevent sway and smooth your ride. Why trust an amateur when you can go with a pro? Sway Pro. A half-ton truck and a modest-sized trailer make a terrific RVing combination. Ford's F-150 matched to the Jayco J Feather Select Model X213 is a versatile, easy-to-drive combo that's a smart camping setup. The F-150 has always been a popular tow rig and today's model is no exception. Stylish but rugged, powerful and refined, it's a hot contender in today's light truck market. 
Ford's EcoBoost V6 is the high-tech engine of choice for many, but some drivers still prefer an old-fashioned V8. The optional 5-liter V8 is rated at 360 horsepower and 380 foot-pounds of torque, and those are pretty good towing numbers. The 6-speed automatic transmission always seems to find the right gear for the grade. Even on dirt roads, the leaf and coil spring suspension keeps the ride smooth, a characteristic for which Ford trucks are well known, but the serious comfort features start inside. A plush but durable interior in Lariat Plus trim level surrounds the occupants in comfort and convenience features. The Sony navigation system and radio is prominent in the well-planned dash. The driver enjoys a full gauge set complemented by the central data screen with even more vehicle information. The rear seats are small but functional and fold up when more storage space is needed in back. Optional flip-over bed extender provides that extra bit of storage space. The F-150 is a fine tow rig and the Jayco X213 proved an especially nice value with a raft of desirable features. Campsite setup is pretty easy with the Jayco. Small size makes it no problem to back into place. A flip of a switch deploys the rear slide out and reveals the sofa bed and dinette seats. Flip up the sofa bed, reposition the dinette pads and table and you have a roomy lounge and dining area that's easy to live with. With the bed deployed, you're ready to relax. The king-size bed is good for a fine night's sleep, and the dinette covers your dining or other table-based activities. The forward bunks include an upper and a lower. The lower bunk can be flipped up for storage and is accessible via the exterior door that makes it something of a small garage type storage spot. A full array of hardware complements the galley, including the three burner stove, deep dual bowl sink and of course the microwave oven. The flat screen TV can be swiveled to face the lounge area for viewing comfort. A key rack is conveniently near the entry while monitors and system controls are grouped behind the cabinet door. The Stereo Entertainment Center is likewise close at hand. The compact bath includes some storage space and includes functional toilet, sink and shower spaces built to fit full-size adults. The Jayfeather Select X213 is a smart, compact trailer with more livability features than originally meet the eye. Matched with the F-150, it's a smart setup for fun and comfortable camping. To learn more about the F-150 or Jayco trailers, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. Next, Verta shows us a couple of great snacks perfect for the fall and winter season. At Jayco, we're a lot more than just an RV manufacturer. We're all about family. And we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. To see our complete product line and find your nearest Jayco dealer, visit us online at Jayco.com or just log on to RollingOnTV.com. Hi, I'm Britta from Trailer Chicks and today we're going to make a few great appetizers that are simple, um, easy to put together, and great for small space parties. I'm going to make some spiced pepitas or pumpkin seeds, and I'm also going to make a pumpkin hummus, which is a nice little twist on hummus and it goes great with the season. So today we're going to start with pumpkin seeds. When you carve a pumpkin for Halloween, you get the big seeds that are white and sometimes people toast those. So this is the inner after you take that hole off this is what's inside. I like to do this in the cast iron and I've put a little bit of olive oil, probably about two tablespoons. And then I'm just gonna throw the seeds in. This is about, I'll use about two cups. And the heat's on about medium high. You don't wanna burn them. So this is something that you do not wanna walk away from. You should stand here and stir the seeds. And when they're getting close to done, they'll start popping. So those are just gonna toast for a little bit. And um, 
After they toast, I'm gonna start adding some spices. Pumpkin seeds are high in zinc, and zinc is good for your immune system. So, especially in this kind of weather, when it's change of, change of seasons, it's a great time to eat more zinc. So I've continued to stir the pumpkin seeds and they're popping a little bit now, which means they're um, close to done. You can also see that they're getting a little bit golden. And the reason I don't want to add the spices until the end is because I don't want to overcook the spices because it might burn them a little bit. And also, if I have the spices on there, I can't see really when the seeds are done. So first of all, I have some kosher salt. I'm going to start with like about a tablespoon. Next, we have some chili powder. This happens to be Chimayo chili powder. And this one has a little bit of heat. A couple teaspoons. Give it a stir. The next spice is gonna be cumin. This is just ground cumin. A couple teaspoons as well. And my favorite seasoning, smoked paprika. This is a special paprika that comes from Spain. This one is sweet, it's not hot. So it's a sweet uh, pimento, and then it's smoked, and it's got this really nice smoky flavor. And I'm gonna do about two teaspoons of that as well. The olive oil helps the spices to adhere, and it looks like they're about done. Just gonna taste a few. Be careful, they're hot. Those are great. So these are done and ready to go. You just wanna let them cool, and then to store them, just keep them in an airtight container, and and keep them on the counter for a couple weeks. They should be fine. That's how you make spice pepitas. Next, I'm gonna show you how to make a pumpkin hummus. So it's a nice little spin on typical hummus, which is a Middle Eastern dip made from um, garbanzo beans. I have some here that I'm using canned garbanzo beans, which work perfectly, something you have on hand. I'm gonna start with garlic, and I just have a couple cloves here of fresh garlic that I peeled, and I'm just gonna chop that. To that, I'm going to add a can of drained garbanzo beans, some tahini, and tahini is kind of what gives it um, hummus that really nice creamy nutty flavor. It is made from sesame seeds, it's just pureed sesame seeds. And this recipe is going to have about a couple tablespoons we'll put in there. The next is the starring ingredient, ingredient pumpkin. And this is canned pumpkin, um, just something else you might have on hand for the holidays, so this is a great way to use it. And this is about a half can. And then it's going to get a couple tablespoons of fresh squeezed lemon juice. If you don't have fresh squeeze, you can use um, lemon juice from a bottle. And a little bit of olive oil, a tablespoon or so. And then I'm just going to blend these up and season it. I'm going to give it a little stir because the beans are floating to the top. So it looks well pureed. I'm going to add some salt. I tend to like things a little lemony, so I'm going to add some more lemon. You've always got to taste things and see how you like them, and then you can decide, does it need more salt, does it need more acid? This could be a little thinner, so I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil. I'm also going to add a pinch of cayenne. This is a great texture. It's really creamy. Really delicious. I think it's perfect. So that's how you make pumpkin hummus, really simple really versatile and a great thing that you can make with uh, food that you have on hand in your pantry. For all these great recipes and more ideas for small space living, just make sure to follow us online. Good morning. It's a beautiful day to be cooking breakfast outdoors here at the Silver Lake Campground in California's High Sierra. Today's recipe is corn pancakes, an old family favorite. Seems to go over pretty well with people. We'll be cooking on our large reversible griddle using the smooth side set up on the Coleman stove here with our grill guard to keep the wind under control around the camp, around the fire. Let's get started. With the stove sufficiently heated, we just 
Start with a shot of butter for the cooking surface. And just dump the corn on. What we're going to be doing is just browning the corn a little bit, get it a little bit crisp before we add it to the, to the mix. It's starting to look good. Getting a little bit of brown on the corn. That's just what it's supposed to do. The mix is just your generic Bisquick pancake mix. We made a two cup batch with, I uh, used some almond milk instead of regular milk, two eggs, and got a little more almond milk than usual. I like my pancakes to be a little bit runnier so they cook up a little bit thinner. That looks like that's about ready to put the corn in as soon as it's done. All right, the corn is looking good. You can see it's got a little bit of chunks of brown, crispy edges showing here. I like mine a little bit on the crispy side. Makes it just a little bit chewy and adds a little interesting body to the inside of the uh, pancakes. The browning's about done, so I don't put it directly into the batter because this is, the corn's off and hot right at the moment. I just toss it on a plate, let it cool off for just a moment prior to throwing it in the mix. That looks good, a little crispy brown. Now that the corn is cooled for a couple of minutes, you just add it directly to the cake mix, or to the dough, batter, whatever. Get it all stirred up. See the chunks in there, that's what we ought to have. Here on out, standard cooking procedure for pancakes. We've got just a little bit of bit of butter I'm putting on the already extremely hot griddle. Anyway, you can see where these are a little bit piled up. I'm going to add a little more soy milk to the mix to thin it down a little so they spread out just a touch more. These are coming off the grill okay. Look like they're about done so we'll just that one's a little overdone but we'll uh, keep up with the batch, get them stored up and get them ready for the crowd of hungry kids to come try them out. Well, they look pretty good. The final test will be our panel of esteemed judges. Yum. They're excellent. Wow. Never had corn and pancakes. Yeah. Corn really adds to it. Gives it a little different, a little different crunch and a little different, a little different flavor. Oh, that's cool. Sometimes you don't have all the ingredients or the high altitude or something. But the corn, because it has that extra juice in it, it makes it really, it like adds the extra moisture that you're looking for. Corn pancakes, not a bad combination. Give it a try sometime. For additional information on anything you saw on this week's show, including Berta's recipe, along with additional videos and stories, visit our website at rollingontv.com. For the latest up-to-the-minute RV news, visit our media partners at RVBusiness.com. If you're into RVing or just appreciate vintage vehicles, be sure to set your GPS for the RV MH Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana. This museum houses the largest collection of vintage RVs and trailers dating as far back as 1916. For more information, visit their website at rvmhhalloffame.org. Mm -hmm.